Rightio, so I went out and got myself a little MIG welder today. I must admit, I'm very impressed with how it's been going. So I decided to go, well, this welder here, um, I might even do a review on it, why not? Once I get the hang of how to use it properly, but as you can see there, it's a three in one MIG stick and TIG. So there's like an adapter for it. I think I put it up there somewhere and you can do arc welding or stick welding with it. Um, so there's that as an option, but I'm going to be using MIG. I would imagine, I can't imagine any instances at this point where I'm going to need arc welding. So my grandpa taught me to weld. It was actually on this car and, oh, come to think of it, um, it was this boot floor here. So these are welds of mine from about 15 years ago. This was all rusted out through there. Um, and I just welded that little patch in. Now, the MIG that I used on that was a gasless electric MIG. So it, it had um, it had a flux core in it. It really wasn't the best welder. It was really hard to get like a neat connection to it. And it was just sort of, yeah, not arcing that well. But it's still holding up strong and it hasn't re-rusted. So that's always good. Um, that patch is still holding up strong. Um, but my, what my grandpa did tell me with um, the stick welding, he always said that's more the uh, structural, like really big welds. Anyway, I'm not an expert on welding, as you can probably guess. Um, but yeah, it, come, it came with this little regulator, and then I went down to Bunnings, and I got a gas bottle. So technically, I'm actually renting that bottle. Um, that was $200 to rent the bottle and then um, an extra $100 for the gas. So the welder itself is $600. It was on special. I think it was like $750 or something like that on special. Um, and I actually got some extra wire myself. So that's, that's another thing. Um, it had like the wire that came with it was the flux core um, without any gas. Um, there's a few settings. I don't know exactly if I've got it set up right. Like as I say, I'm not a professional. I'm not. I've never really done any professional training with welding. I'm just a point and shoot type guy. Um, it was very easy to set up. I barely had to read the instructions. I did read a couple of things here, um, which was handy. So I'm, I'm getting the polarities right. You do actually have to switch them around for different types of welding. Um, put the right uh, tip on and I'm off and running. So this was 0.9 uh, gauge uh, mild steel wire that I've got on there. Um, and I've already done a couple of little welds. So I started off just on this quarter panel here. So originally this car must have had body molds on it. It must have had uh, the molds that ran the whole way down the side. And what someone's done at some point, he's, they've just knocked them out and left the holes in there and just bogged it up so what i obviously went and did is just started off just by welding a few of those up so there's no longer holes um and they all started rusting they must have started rusting from the inside so obviously i've just thrown a bit of primer on there just to stop it from rusting up for now um and i'll just sort of progress on as i go um but i have gone cut a couple of little patches out of here I might actually cut that out bigger just so that I can treat the inside because as you can see there is a little bit of rust on the inside there. Um, with these guards you can actually get rust repair sections. So you can get, they sell a section that's about that size, something like that, and you can just weld that entire uh, lower guard section in. I think some people even do the inners as well. So. Um, I think I might need the inner and the outer for the other side guard, uh, but I've gone and ordered like so much stuff uh, for this car already. I pretty much basically got all the panels that I'm going to need to repair this. But yeah, this guard for the passenger side, that's gonna need a lower section, I'm pretty sure. So I've already ordered that lower section in. Hopefully you can see enough down there, but yeah, that's, that's kind of pretty, pretty toast. And especially through that back edge there, like there's nothing nothing to weld to if you really wanted to do a patch. So that's where it's kind of handy to have that whole lower thing down there. Um, and I'll have a look if I'm gonna need the inside too. But yeah, as for this rear door, like it looks really bad, but it's actually pretty solid. So I reckon if it was just that, I probably would have given it a go repairing. But being that we've got down here as well, like I would have to weld a pretty big patch in down there, which of course it's doable. Um, but again, this comes pretty close to the edge of that door there, which it, there's not really much to weld to there. Um, no doubt there's some experts out there who would, you know, make a small job out of that. 
But for me, um, with my limited uh, fabrication and welding skills, if I can find a good condition rear door for one of these for, you know, less than say $500, I think I'll probably pick it up. Um, which will end up replacing all the doors except for the driver's side rear door. Um, but yeah, look, I'm making good progress. This is one week. So I've been working on this car like I've got it back one week as of today. So I've made some pretty good progress. I've spent a lot of money on it, but I reckon a bulk of the spending for the body at the very least is done. Like most of it, obviously not completely finished. Um, but yeah, I'm making very good progress. I just thought I'd give you guys a look at what I'm up to. Oh, that's right. I also went out and got myself a little trolley jack there and a couple of jack stands because no doubt, especially when that back panel comes in. I've actually got a new back panel on the way in. That should be in in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to have to start unpicking and grinding that whole back panel off. So I might even just uh, jack the car up when I do that. But that's why I've decided to leave the boot lid on for now, at least anyway, just so that I can make sure that the back panel does sit up there. Um, and same thing, I haven't just gone and ripped everything off for a good reason. Um, what I'm thinking of is getting this door on to make sure that everything fits properly. Um, so I'm not just sort of going hammer and tong without thinking about the job and without thinking how I'm going about doing it. I am sort of thinking about it and you know it might not be the perfect way but it's going to be my way um but yeah i'm going to obviously have to weld in some patches here um what i might even do is see if i can find some stuff at work that's already got this kind of a bend in it um if i can like they might end up pulling a quarter panel off another car and i might find a section that's got half of those shapes there already um, the lower quarter panels, they're toast, uh, but I've got them ordered in. I've got one for each side ordered in. So I'm going to have to cut them off around here and then weld them in. So, look, I've definitely got a lot of work, but look, I'm in no hurry to get this job done. I'm doing it at my own leisure, but I have been doing pretty long hours. And I think it was like Tuesday or Wednesday night. I sort of lost track of time and I was out here until 10.30 at night, which, um, I'm usually asleep by at least in bed by 9.30 or 10 o'clock, so I was a little bit tired the next day because because of it. But yeah, that was the night that I got the whole front end sort of basically ripped apart. So here I am having a bit of a Sunday session. As you can tell, it's a bit of a cold day outside, so I've got the hoodie on today. Um, a good day to be in the garage working on the Tirana. So what I had here was a bit of a rust patch around here. Um, I had one around here. Originally, I just cut out the small sections, but then I thought, you know what? I'm going to cut it out a little bit bigger. That's going to act as a bit of an access hole to get in and treat the rest of the rust on the inside of it. So obviously, I've treated it. I went down to Bunnings and I got some of this stuff here. This is actually pretty good stuff, the White Knight Rust Guard, um, and that's a rust converter. <clears throat> So the next step from there, and you know, a little bit rudimentary, but I just got this thing right here, right? So I just measured that around the shape that I need. I then put it down there, just got a little aerosol pack, and I'm just gonna get my angle grinder, cut that out. I'll then be cleaning the steel up on this side, because as you can see, there's a little bit excess um, rust converter there. I'll then make sure this steel is nice and clean on both sides and I'll start welding. So I just thought I'd give you guys a look at what I'm up to. Um, for now, just a quick look. I'll do some welding videos later on, but I just thought I'd give you guys a look at um, the basic procedure of what I'm doing. Obviously, I did the inside there. I've only got one hand at the moment because I'm holding the cam, but um, I did treat all the inside and cleaned up all the, the loose rust and treated it. So yeah, having fun. So I decided to crack that door open a little bit when I was doing my welding because it was getting, you know, like a bit of smoke coming out. So it's good to have a little bit of um, ventilation when you're doing that. But that's that patch in. That's looking pretty neat, you know, like the welds weren't the absolute best, but they had good penetration. Like I haven't got any gaps in here. Like there's no holes in there that air is going to, air and water are going to get through later on. So... I'm actually quite happy with that. That's a pretty good welder if you ask me. Like I'm not a professional welder, um, obviously, but all I'm gonna do from there is, I've got this um, just 1K edge primer. Um, I'm just gonna 
cover that up just to stop it from rusting as I continue on with the job. So that's my plan at this point is just get all the rust repairs, just tackle the worst of this job first, get the rust repairs done, seal them down, and then I'll worry about stripping all the rest of the paint off and then I'll do the uh, body filler repairs. So obviously that's going to need some body filler, um, but I will ta tackle that later on. I'm going to flip the inside up and I'm gonna clean up all the inside later on as well. But as I say, first off, I wanna get the worst of the rust done and that's just one less panel that I have to worry about. So. I feel like even though it's only been one week, I'm kind of making pretty good progress. There was a couple of holes here from the body molds. That was just the first thing I was doing yesterday. I just sort of wanted to play around with that welder. And stupid me, don't do what I did. I thought I had the gas turned on, but I actually forgot to turn it on from the regulator here. So I turned it on there, but I didn't have it on there, which is why I was getting some um, sort of not the best welds put it that way so i was actually getting some holes in it because of the impurities uh because i didn't have the gas so i ground them out and i re-welded them but um there was actually a couple of holes here same thing i just um welded them up just to play around with it and obviously they're going to need a grind back um and when i get this back panel in i think the back panel kind of stops like here or something so i may have to sort of like fabricate up my own little corner pieces but um that's not going to be too big of an issue for me. Um, I've got lots of uh, old Tirana panels here, so that door's obviously toast. It's not going to be used. I've actually got another one sitting there anyway. So, as I say, guys, I just thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a look at what I'm up to here. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further, you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favorite is those spray suits. So they're a good quality Colad branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies and t-shirts. So be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested.